<laughs> I'm over here wringing my hands and giggling because I just read the title and nothing more. Oh, I'm ready. D&D Dungeon Masters of Reddit. What is the most useless magical item you've ever given your party and how did they use it? Part 2. My groups have a tradition of gifting players useless magic items with a birthday theme on their IRL birthday. <laughs> Two of the favorites that I bestowed so far include a pair of boots that drop streamers everywhere he walked, and a ring that turned the wearer's poop into chocolate cake, which could be eaten to regain one hit point. Obligatory not the DM, but our party's DM gave us a magical, mysterious bag. When we opened it, we pulled out a turtle. <laughs> That's kind of cute. We reach in again, thinking there must be something else to this bag. We pull out a rabbit. Still thinking there must be something else, something more meaningful to this item, we reach in again and pull out a nine-foot-tall deer. <laughs> It was really just a backpack that lets you pull out random animals. My bard proceeds to use speak with animals, then charms the deer to let us ride him. We named him Preston, and he's been our ridiculously massive means of transportation ever since. One of my one-shot campaigns had all players at 8th level, so I wanted to give them magical items, but not too OP. So one of my monk players wanted a decanter of endless water. So I changed it to a homebrew version where it didn't do the stream, fountain, or geyser things, but instead it would pour endless alcoholic beverages. <laughs> he could make the decanter fill with mojitos or margaritas or a Heineken, whatever, but only to get drunk. I thought it was harmless and fine until I realized he selected the way of the drunken master, oh shit, and got drunk on command anywhere and everywhere. It was quite fun. A DM once gave our party a mortar and pestle that let us grind out spices in fairly large quantities. We were supposed to use it as a hook to get involved with an army. It would have let the cooks keep the soldiers happy and put us in good graces of the local lord. Instead, we wound up completely abandoning that quest line, setting up a spice shop, and went into business. Oh yeah. It was supposed to be a one-off adventure, but we had a great DM and it turned into the best long-term campaign I've ever played. It had court intrigue, assassination, attempts, war, curses, everything you could want. It ended when we all went our separate ways at the end of high school, with one of my business partners, Human, dying of old age, another, Elvin, selling his shares of the business to the dead one's heirs to retire, and my gnome faking his own death and leaving town to avoid a jealous husband. <laughs> Literally riding off into the sunset on a flying merchant ship. Damn, that's a good story. So a friend told me a story of his one time that fits the bill, I think. At some point in a homebrew game, the party gets their hand on a wand of magic farts. Point and fart. Literally. They used it to sneak around quite effectively for a while. Then they had to deal with a cult with a secret mountain hideout. Traveled through a cave system until they reached the antechamber with four lit braziers around the altar. My friend, a wizard, uses the wand until he rolls a one. The wand then springs a leak spraying methane and slowly filling the chamber. Everyone bolts out as the wizard runs around the room before chucking the wand at the altar and following suit. They get out just in time to seal the entrance and blow off the top of the mountain, literally. They were blinded and deafened for three turns each. A modified version of the 5e wind fan that only works once a day and immediately looks tattered after use. Now, it sounds like not a bad magical item, but the only times it's ever been used is to show people what it does. Hey, what's this fan do? <laughs> I'll show you. Useless gust of wind noises, usually coming from my ass because I have all sort of colitis. It happened five times and then it got sold off to the underground scrapper they were working for. They haven't figured out how to use it yet, but I gave my party a jar of kraken bait, full of rancid fish magically enchanted to attract a giant octopus when it's thrown in the water. The only problem, the jar is also cursed, and whoever possesses the jar loses the ability to open any doors or containers that require any sort of twisting motion. They can't open it. This is what you get for seriously considering buying the ring that turns you into a were crocodile and giving the DM a how the fuck do I balance this hard? attack. And the best part? They never stop to ask if the jar is even a twist top. It's not. They just assumed they couldn't open it. 
not completely useless, but a weird chain of effects nonetheless. So this is Pathfinder. I joined the campaign in progress as a dwarven ranger, oh my heart, with a hit list and the social skills of a block of wood. The party included a halfling rogue whose impromptu resurrection made him an unwilling tool of Sanrea, a paladin of Sanrea with a penchant for moral loopholes, and an impulsive sorcerer who is probably the best example of chaotic neutral I have ever seen. When I say he's chaotic neutral, I mean it. At one point, he attempted to recruit a band of adventurers to help us fight an army of demons. He immediately gave a rousing speech at the local tavern establishment of the Drunken God, leading to a chain of events that ended with a riot, two sunken ships, and an accidental guard kidnapping. How the fuck that happened, I don't know. So, anyway. Long story short, we are out in the wilderness hunting down his long lost father, who is being dragged through the wilderness by a Dullin servant of the Dark Lord, who is using some bad mojo to bring back undead dragons. I track the Dullin, and we sneak up on the camp in the middle of this freezing cold wilderness. We start prepping ourselves, and Ned, the chaotic neutral sorcerer, pulls out the mask of the skull. For the uninitiated, it's a skull mask that can fly off and eat an enemy's face. A Dullin, on the the other hand, has no actual head, instead relying on stolen heads strapped to his chest. The table all groan at the mere mention of the mask. People exasperatedly tell him not to use the mask. He ignores them and puts it on. Rowan, our less than moral paladin, finally pipes up. You know what? Fuck it. I use detect evil. Silence. The DM and Ned exchange looks, then he gently shuts his DM book, folds his hands, and takes a breath. You detect evil. We all stop confused. Uh, what? Ned throws his hands up. Look, guys, I can explain. You remember that stuff we found a few weeks into the campaign that was hungry for blood and I kept feeding it? So it turns out that it was a staff to switch places with with the being imprisoned inside. My name is actually Illifast. I'm a thousand-year-old elf sorcerer who was imprisoned by the Dark Lord before his turn to evil. My imprisonment has driven me quite evil. Chaos ensues. Rowan is trying to find a way to not kill him and still keep his oath. Nyx, the rogue, is nervously picking at one of her many daggers, and I'm standing there with my magic automatic crossbow and giant wolf trying to figure out what the hell is going on. As it turns out, I've never actually met Ned. The entire time we were adventuring together, Ned was trapped in the staff. It was an awkward introduction after everything was sorted out, and now Ned and Illifas tended to swap places randomly while forgetting to tell us. Though both are so chaotic, it's pretty hard for us to tell. So yeah, the item wasn't exactly useless, and we were all much too powerful to need it, but its use directly led to a revelation that completely changed the story that we had been adventuring through for the past few weeks. A ring of invisibility, except by reading the fine print, you understand that the ring itself turns invisible when you put it on, and nothing else. They eventually sold it as a novelty to a traveling merchant. Rod of Irony was a fishing rod that you could only find by fishing it up. Using it only fished up more rods of irony. Eh, we used them for firewood. I used to love making magical items that were off the wall. I felt like the game's items didn't reflect the silly stuff someone would make if they had the time and manic attention to detail. There's a devil called a chitin. It's a chain-wrapped, chain-swinging, freaky, pain-loving Hellraiser type. My party fought one in a dungeon. He's wearing a unique amulet that makes chains. You place a piece of chain on the surface, and the amulet starts slowly, magically generating a chain of the same dimensions. It only makes 10 foot a day, but over time you could make a few gold selling mundane chain. I just thought it was thematic and interesting. The party left the dungeon, went to town, found a smith, and poured their entire life savings into making two links of solid gold chain that would make flavor Flav wait! And I wept. What a fool I was. 
I had a reoccurring gnome character that sold several gag magic items that intended to be used as pranks, including the Ring of Invisibility. We just covered this. It's just invisible. It doesn't do anything when you put it on, and since it's invisible, it doesn't even serve the purpose of being ornamental. Never burning torch. A torch that absolutely, positively does not light. It's also too lightweight to use as a club. Amulet of spell turning. Literally, all it does is spell the word turning out loud when activated. <laughs> I almost pissed myself. That's good. I don't know why. In common, in the voice of Gilbert Godfrey. Oh my God. So it says, Turning T U R N I N G. <laughs> Fucking dead. Uh -huh. Bag of molding. A bag that causes mold to grow on anything placed within it. Oil of slippery lessness. Oil that is no more slippery than water. Lying carpet. A carpet that always replies to your question with lies. The drawback is that the carpet is sentient, so it's entirely capable of unintentionally telling the truth. Ring of infinite wishes. The only thing you can wish for is more wishes. In my last campaign, my player got a hammer that shoots confetti and makes a party blower sound on crits. A dramatic moment happened where he had to put his pet owlbear down, as it was morphing into a monstrosity because of the big bad evil guy. Because the creature was on the ground morphing, he auto crit. The beast lies there, writhing in pain, trying to hold on to its own self for as long as possible. You lift your hammer solemnly in the air, feeling the weight of not only the weapon, but the situation. As you bring it down, you feel the flesh give as the skull has been pulverized from the transformation. The sound of teeth clacks against the ground, echoing in the room around you. The party looks at the ground, and a moment of silence consumes you all. Not the DM, but the guy who used the item. I got a corncob pipe that made bubbles. Seriously, that's it, just bubbles. They didn't put people to sleep, they didn't explode under flames, nothing. Maybe it would make someone's eyes burn if they rubbed it in? We were assaulting a town and I was part of the crew taking the gatehouse. We barred the windows and doors and I put the pipe under the edge of the door and blew like I was inflating my own life raft in the ocean. Soon, bubbles were pouring out at the seams and the guards inside were panicking hardcore. One of them tripped on something and hurt himself on his own weapon. Once we opened the door, they came stumbling out and we cut them down while they were disoriented and distracted. Shortly thereafter, I traded the stupid pipe for various types of arrows out of Fletcher. I had that damn pipe for a long time and only used it that once. It was a full rusty dagger. However, when you touched it, you became obsessed with it. It wasn't a good weapon. It didn't do anything other than make you obsess over it. First person touched it, pulled them into another room, told them the rules of the curse. By the end of the session, three out of five were obsessing over holding this dagger. The other two were incredibly intrigued and scared by it. Almost tore the group apart. It wasn't D&D, and I wasn't the DM. But in one Vampire Requiem game, our party once destabilized the entire hierarchy of vampires in the Caribbean with a jar of cursed peaches. It was enchanted to refill itself, and if the unfortunate individual who ate the peaches failed a fortitude save, it did a few lethal damage to their insides and they shit blood. Uh, I have another feeling. We filled a crate, maneuvered it onto a rival ship, and claimed it was from a different rival. Full-scale war may or may not have ensued. Hey everyone, Brian here. How have you guys and gals been? Anything interesting happened today? Did you discover a hidden talent for cooking, or did you finally find a few pennies or pounds in the couch? How's that workout been going? Or how's your favorite show been treating you? Did you find love or a new friend? Hell, in that regard, how are your loved ones and your friends in general? No matter what news you have to share or lack thereof, I hope the world's been treating you well and that you're staying positive. That said, I hope you liked the video, and if you did, then hey, leave a like. And if you're new here, welcome to the crew. Give us a big subscribe and let us know how you found us. It's always an interesting tale. Speaking of tales, if you ever want to share one with us related to the topic of the video or not, toss it in the comments below or in our subreddit. Links can be found in the description. 
On that note, if you ever want to follow me and my personal journey as a voice actor and streamer, I invite you to join not only my followers over on Twitter, but I do have a public Discord for voice actors, writers, artists, fans, friends, game developers, name it. All the links will be down in the description below as well. But I will say it is more tame than Ripper's server, of course, and we don't allow anything not safe for work. But all the same, it's a place of positivity, memes, dark humor sometimes, and friends. And y'all are welcome to come say hi and hang out, and if it's not a place for you, then you don't have to stay. But if it is, then hey, welcome. And you're free to be here. <laughs> and without further rambling, I want to leave you with something special. Today on Twitter, the world was asked a question. If we could say one thing to heal the suffering in the world, what would we say? Now, I'm not one to be cliche, but from my heart straight to the world, this is what I did say and this is what I would say. Earth is home to a plethora of life. All life is finite. All life begins and ends in a similar darkness. While you're here, you have infinite light. You get to see beautiful things. Painful sometimes, but beautiful nonetheless. So spend that time with love, not hate. With that, Stay safe, be happy, and we'll see you next time.